Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at how you would invert a 2x2 two two matrix so we can answer questions from exercise 6D. Now there's all sorts of different ways um, that you can inverse a matrix. We're going to see one way that you can inverse a matrix. Um, when you look at higher order matrices there's probably a better way to invert matrices than what we're going to do here. Um, but this is a nice quick way that we can invert 2x2 two two matrices that's following a quick simple process. Why you would invert a matrix you'll see in future videos, hopefully. This is just a how-to video on how to invert a 2x2 two two matrix. So this is how you do it. If we start with a matrix A, B, C, D, then the inverse of that matrix is 1 over a times D take away B times C. Now you'll have seen this um, value here before. That's the determinant. So the reason that we're going to work out the determinant, or the reason, one of the reasons why the determinant is useful to work out, is that the inverse of a matrix is 1 divided by the determinant as a scale factor at the front of the matrix. And then inside the matrix, the cells of the matrix, well, if you can see here A and D are going to swap round, B and C are going to stay where they are, but they become negated. So D times D and A swap round, B and C stay where they are, but they become negative. So every cell has something to do. Um, it's either a swap or it's a negate. Okay. So, um, yeah, so let's, uh, so yeah. Here is, here is the steps. First of all, we swap over A and D. We negate the other two values. And then we pull out the determinant at the front of the matrix. And generally, we're going to keep it as a scale factor at the front of the matrix. If it's, for example, a 1 over 2 and all of the values inside your matrix are even, then it would be a good idea to um, incorporate that half inside the matrix. But generally, my preferred way of um, writing a final answer for an inverse is to keep the 1 over determinants at the front of the matrix. Um, now we come across uh, a little anomaly when what happens when we divide by 0 or what happens if a d minus b c is equal to 0 well in that case we say that there is no inverse there does not exist an inverse for this matrix it's a singular matrix it's on its own it doesn't have a buddy that is its inverse, okay? So not all matrices have inverses. We're only going to be looking at two by twos in this video. Only square matrices have inverse videos. And how can you tell whether a matrix has an inverse or not? Well, it's whether the determinant is equal to zero or not, okay? If it's not equal to zero, so for example, it's six, it will always have an inverse, okay? They're either called singular or non-singular matrices. Singular is on its own, doesn't have an inverse. Non-singular has a buddy, it's not on its own. It has something that will times together by itself to make one, or the matrix equivalent of one. Now, that's a good question. What is the matrix equivalent of one? Well, what were to happen if we times the inverse of a matrix by the original matrix? Let's go ahead and try that. Let's leave the scale factor at the front for now. And we'll look at timesing the matrices together. So the first part is D times A minus B, C. So you go across the top of the matrix and down the left-hand column for the top left. Down the t uh, Along the top of the first one and down the bottom right for the second one. Along the bottom row for the bottom left-hand one. So it's minus A, C, add A, C. And then it's minus B, C, add A, D for that cell there. Now see how the top right and the bottom left cells would cancel out to make a zero. And then the other two cells, well, we've got a 1 over A, D minus B, C at the front. So that will all simplify to make a 1, 0, 0, 1. So this matrix here is effectively the matrix equivalent of 1. Effectively, if you were to do 5 times 5 inverse, you would get 5 times 1 over 5, which is 1. So that's effectively a similar process to do with numbers, and this is the same process to do with matrix algebra, 
um, in which case you get the identity 2 matrix. It needs a little 2 on the bottom there because it's representing a 2 by 2 identity matrix. Don't use I for inverse, never use I for inverse. You'll always use the notation of um, A and A to the power of minus 1 as your inverse. All right, so let's have a go at a question here then. First matrix A is 3, 2, minus 1, 1. B is 2, 1, 2, 1. And C is 1, 3, 2, 0. And the question is, start by calculating um, the determinant so that you can then find the inverse of the matrix. The re it's a good um, idea to start with working out the determinants because if the determinant is 0, then you know that it doesn't have an inverse and you can stop your calculations there. So the first matrix, 3, 2, minus 1, 1. Well, the first thing we do is calculate the determinants. 3 add 2 gives us 5. The reason we're adding there is because we've got a double negative appearing on the back there. So it's 5. So now fill in the missing parts. We've got a minus 1 equals 1 over 5 because 5 was the determinant. This will always come in here. And then a and the d swap round. So it's 1 and 3. And then the 2 and the minus 1, they don't swap round. They stay where they are, but they change signs. So now it's minus 2 and 1. Okay, so if it was negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Okay, so that's the answer to uh, question one. Now, what you can do as well is you can incorporate the fifth inside the cells in your matrix, um, in which case you would get decimals here. Uh, if it were me, I'd prefer to keep it in this form here. If all of these values inside the matrix were divisible by five, then I'd definitely go for this one here, but either form is okay. Okay, for part B, uh, work out the matrix B. First, work out the determinant. And in this case here, it's going to be 2 times 1 minus 1 times 2, which gives us a value of 0. So B does not have an inverse. It has a determinant of 0, therefore there is no, there is no inverse. For matrix C, let's work out the determinant first. So 1 times 0 is 0, minus 3 times 2 is that would be minus 6 in total. So the inverse of matrix C is going to be minus 1 over 6 because it's minus a sixth as the determinant. And then swap the A and the D around. So it's 0 and 1. And then negate the other two values. So it's going to be minus 3 and minus 2. Okay, so that's the answer for C inverse. Sometimes what people do is instead of incorporating the whole negative 6, is they will just incorporate the negative sign. So it'll be 0, 3, 2, minus 1, without the negative on the 6th at the front of that matrix there. So you may see an answer like that. And if it were me, I would leave that as my final answer. All right then, so a slightly more difficult question here. It's something to do with um, a little bit of uh, what we call matrix algebra. So rearranging algebra in for matrices. Okay, we're given here that A and B are a two by two matrix, uh, non-singular matrices such that B times A times B just so happens to come out to be I. Now we've seen what I stands for. That's the identity matrix. And remember the identity times anything is just that matrix that you had before. And we're asked to show here that A equals B inverse times another B inverse. Okay, so what we're looking to do here is how do we cancel out Bs from either side of the A on this left-hand side of this identity here? Now the first thing you would do is to multiply by B inverse. Now, where would you multiply by B inverse in this case here, we're going to start by pre-multiplying the inverse of B. So terminology here coming in that's pre-multiply by B inverse. Why are we calling this pre-multiply? Well, because it's effectively at the start of both expressions on the left-hand side. If it was in the back of um, 
the two expressions on the left and right hand side, I would call that post multiply. Why is it important that we have this terminology? Well, remember that AB does not necessarily equal BA when you're working in matrices. So it is important that you get the order of your multiplication correct. Um, it's not just a case that you can flip letters around depending on your own personal preference. Okay, so in this case here, our first step was to pre-multiply by B inverse. What we can do here is we can simplify this B inverse times B. Well, that's effectively um, uh, matrix times by its times by its inverse matrix. So that will simplify to the matrix I. So remember any matrix times the, times the inverse of that matrix in whichever order you want it to be in will always simplify to make the identity. So in this special case here, it doesn't matter what order you times a matrix by its inverse, you'll always get the identity matrix. Okay, so that's how we can simplify that. We can also cancel out i's on both sides because when you times by an i, it's effectively the same as timesing by a 1, so it didn't really, doesn't really need to be there. You can cancel them out. Okay, so now we've got AB equals B inverse. Now, how do we get rid of this B at the back? Well, in this case here, the B at the back needs to have a post-multiplication of B inverse so that then these two here together we we'll simplify to make the identity. So simplify the B and the B inverse to make the identity. Cancel out the identity because it's effectively a one in matrix form. And then you get A equals B inverse, B inverse. Now, I generally avoid using the notation of B minus two. You're not quite, it's not quite um, standardized what that actually means in matrix algebra. So I just leave that alone and not refer to it here. Okay, so that's answered part A, and now what we're looking to do is um, answer part B, which is given that B is equal to 2, 5, 1, 3, find the matrix A such that B, A, B equals the identity, which is exactly what we started with. Well, given that we've just proven this, that's probably going to be the key to unlocking the answer for part B here. So, if we've just proven that straight from B A B equals I, we can show that A equals B inverse B inverse. Let's just find the inverse of B and times it by itself. So what is going to be the inverse of B? Well, first we'll work out the determinant. 6 minus 5 is 1, so it's uh, B inverse is going to equal 1 over 1. Swap the 3 and the 2 around, negating the 5 and the 1, so minus 5 and minus 1. You don't really need the 1 over 1 at the start there, so we can cancel that out. Now to find A, we just need to now times this matrix by itself. So timesing along for the first matrix, down for the second matrix. Um, and we get 3 times 3, add 5 times 1. 3 times minus 5, add minus 5 times 2. Minus 1 times 3 and 2 times minus 1, and then minus 1 times minus 5, add 2 times 2, and simplify all of those values there, and we get the matrix A, which is what we were looking for, 14, minus 25, minus 5, and 9. Okay, so we've seen in this video here how we invert matrices, and also a bit of how we rearrange matrix algebra, which is really important. Now you can do most of this stuff on your calculator. What you need to do, hit the menu button, option number four to get into the matrix mode. Define a matrix, so hit option number one. Hit two by two first to get the amount of rows and columns you need. Enter the cells using the keypad and the up and down arrows to get yourself in the right location. <clears throat> and then if you're looking to do the inverse, clear what you did before, click option, grab up matrix A by pressing keypad number three and then the symbol that you're looking for for inverses is this one here x to the power of minus one 
Remember, if you were to do 5 to the power of minus 1, that would give you 1 over 5. So it's effectively an inverse button here. Press that button next to your matrix, press enter, and you'll get 3 minus 5 minus 1, 2, which is exactly the answer to the inverse of the matrix that we were looking at previously. So you can do inverse matrices on your calculator um, if, you, um, if you want to check an answer. All right, so have a go at these two questions here then, pause the video and try them out. Okay, so the first one here should be pretty straightforward. It's just working out what AD minus BC is. So that's going to be 6 minus minus 4, which will give us 10. Okay, pretty straightforward with that one there. Hopefully you've now had lots of practice at finding determinants and it's quite easy for you now. Okay, part 3a, I'm going to start over here. Given that ABC equals I, now when it says given that, you can start your algebra at this point here. Given that ABC equals I means start here. Effectively, we're showing things algebraically. Prove that B inverse equals CA. So that's what we're looking to do there. We're looking to prove that the B inverse is equal to CA by a reasonable amount of steps using algebra manipulation. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I need to somehow get through and into B. So first of all, I think I'm going to have to either get rid of C or A. Um, I think I'm going to choose to get rid of A onto the other side first. So I need to pre-multiply by A inverse, that's going to give me A inverse A, B, C equals A inverse I. Now if we remember here, A inverse times A will cancel out, and I, that's effectively just the number 1 in matrix form, so that will cancel out as well. Now this is not what we're looking for here, we're looking to show B inverse is equal to something, so now we can also um, pre-multiply by B inverse. So this will give us B inverse B C equals B inverse A inverse. Now remember B inverse B will cancel out so we're effectively left with C equals B inverse A inverse. So now we've got a B inverse symbol in there so that's good. Um, we want to effectively now move the A inverse onto the other side here. So now what I'm going to do is post multiply by A, which is going to give me CA equals B inverse A inverse A. Notice here how it's different to what I've done previously in that the A that I've multiplied on both sides has appeared at the back now. The reason I've forced it to appear at the back is so that this A inverse and A can cancel out. And now I'm just left with B inverse equals C. A, which is what it was looking for me to show. Okay, so that's part A answered there for us. Part B here is saying that given that A is this and C is this, find B. Well, I know that I can work out B inverse by multiplying matrix C and then A in that exact order. So let's go ahead and do that. So multiplying these two matrices together. What I'll do after I've found B inverse is I'll invert that matrix and when you inverse an inverse you get back to where you started which is going to be matrix B. Okay so B inverse is going to be 2 times 0 that's going to be minus 1, 2 times 1 is 2, add 1 times 6 is 8, minus 3 times 0, minus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, and minus 3 times 1 is minus 3, minus another 6, that would be minus 9. Now the inverse of this matrix here, the first thing I'll do is calculate the determinant, so that's going to be 9 take away 8, which is 1, so that's going to be a 1 over 1, so I don't really need to write that at the front, and then reverse these two signs here, so we're going to get minus 9, minus 1, and negate the other two symbols here, so that's minus 8, and minus 1. So that's our final answer there. Whoops, no, I've, I've inversed the inverse. So effectively I've inversed the inverse. 
So my final answer here is exactly this. Minus 9, minus 8, minus 1, minus 1. There we are. So that's matrix B found by um, matrix A and C. All right then, so um, lots, of, lots of different parts that you've seen here. You've seen a bit of matrix algebra rearrangement. Try and find some questions like that in exercise 60 or the mixed exercise at the end of the chapter. And we've seen a bit of inverse matrices stuff as well. So make sure you have lots of practice of that in exercise 6D as well. All right then, thanks very much for watching.